In this video, we'll talk a little bit about some suspicious scripts that could be running in your environment. Then we'll talk about some bypasses that might be making it difficult to actually determine or detect that those uh, suspicious behaviors are happening. And finally, we'll look at how to use PowerShell Protect to actually block and audit when those types of suspicious behaviors or bypasses are attempting to be executed. So um, we're going to look at two bypasses today. First is the PowerShell logging bypass that was released by BC Security last week. Um, it disables both module um, logging as well as um, script block logging. Um, next, we'll look at the AMSI bypass, which was released by uh, Assurance um, last year. And this actually bypasses the anti-malware scan interface completely uh, inside your current PowerShell process, which prevents um, scanning of scripts by Defender or uh, the built-in AMSI uh, scanners, as well as other third-party AMSI providers. So uh, first, let's look at um, PowerShell logging. So I'm running a, a Windows Server here, and you need Windows Server 2016 or 2019 um, uh, to do kind of the things that I'm doing today. Um, and we're going to talk about um, first enabling um, pretty much PowerShell script block logging and module logging. Um, first of all, uh, that is found inside uh, group policy. You can see I'm just setting up my default domain policy, and I've gone to computer configuration, administrative templates, Windows components. Um, and then I've gone to PowerShell, uh, Windows PowerShell. And then from there, I've turned on module logging as well as script block logging. So module logging, the way that you enable that is uh, by determining which modules you want to actually log for. And you can see here that I've just set my module names to star, so it'll log all commands run from all modules. Uh, next, you'll see that I'm running um, PowerShell script block logging. So this will run pretty much against all scripts that are executed. So um, let's take a look at what that looks like. So I'm going to open up uh, Windows PowerShell here. And if I just do a write host call, um, let me just say, hey, um, I have some stuff in my history that's uh, causing this to happen. Uh, that's actually AMSI uh, kicking in. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But you can see here that I, wrote, I did write host, and it wrote, hey. If I actually go to my um, Windows PowerShell event log here, what you'll see is that we actually will have uh, hey written out into uh, the event log under event ID 800 with the pipeline execution details. It'll actually give you that command line that was executed. Uh, another type of um, logging is the script block logging, and that's actually going to be inside application and service logs, Microsoft, Windows, and then if you find PowerShell, it'll be in the operational log. So whenever a script is run here, what you'll see is that we will actually get um, this executed a remote command, and then it'll actually print out the script block that was logged, so you could actually check and see you know, what scripts are being run inside, inside your environment. So let's look at the bypasses for these particular um, examples. So first of all, I'm going to run uh, the module logging bypass. So this one's really, really simple. There's actually just, oops, I need to copy and paste. Uh, there's actually just a property on the module info object that you can get and set to prevent logging from that module. So if I just set log pipeline execution details to false and I do write host again, you're going to see that this is no longer going to show up inside the um, log down here. So in uh, here, you'll see that we have some commands for setting strict mode off. Uh, we have a dot command, and then we have another dot command. But um, in this command sequence, you don't see the right host anymore. So you can simply just turn off pretty much logging for all the modules of the commands that um, you may be running inside your environment to kind of evade that pipeline execution details log. Um, the other place that this was logged, if we come up to um, our operational log here, you'll see that we actually still got uh, this particular log here, this 4104 log that uh, is writing out write host. But um, we can actually bypass that by um, creating our own script block, setting an internal property on that script block, and then invoking that script block. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So to create a script block, I use two brackets around uh, the code I want to run. So I'm just going to say log me. Um, and then from there, 
I can actually use reflection to uh, get the has logged property from that uh, script block and then set that property to true. So the script block thinks it is already logged. And then finally, if I go ahead and invoke that script block, you'll see that it invokes the script block. We'll reload this and we'll look at our remote um, commands here. And what you'll see is that we have that script invoke and we have the prompt, but we don't actually have the execution of what was inside that script block, which was that log me text. So you can see here that we've bypassed um, both module logging and script block logging just by setting some properties inside um, the PowerShell objects that we're using here. All right, so now let's look at a kind of a more complex, um, I guess, exploit. This one should be a little bit easier to recognize that it's happening because it uses add type to compile some types and uses pinvoke to get a hold of some um, unmanaged functions that it needs to call. It'll actually load up the AMSI DLL and then uh, patch it. So let's talk a little bit about how that works. So if we load up um, our Windows PowerShell here, and uh, one thing you can do to test the AMSI provider is you can actually type AMSI scan buffer and the AMSI provider, the default one that's built into Windows, is looking for this particular string because it, you know, it, it anticipates that people are trying to mess with the AMSI DLL directly, so it looks for AMSI scan buffer. So if I try to run that, it says this script contains uh, malicious content and has been blocked by your antivirus software. So that is AMSI kicking in and saying, no, you can't run that script because it's malicious. So what we can do is we can actually use this AMSI bypass that was um, created by that research team and it's going to actually patch the memory up inside uh, this DLL or in this PowerShell process and then now if I run AMSI scan buffer again you can see it uh, allows me to run this script. Uh, the reason it allows me to run the script is because it's bypassed AMSI completely and it's no longer scanning scripts in this PowerShell process. So uh, that's one way to work around pretty much all AMSI providers that are loaded inside um, Windows PowerShell here. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about uh, how Windows or PowerShell Protect can um, kind of help uh, identify some of these issues and potentially block some of these issues. Um, and to do that, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and install um, PowerShell Protect. Uh, it's just a PowerShell module that you can get from um, PowerShell uh, Gallery. Um, so I've kind of messed up my... Um, my PS read line history, it contains that AMSI scan buffer. And since I reopened a new PowerShell uh, version, um, it detected that and uh, <laughs> it skipped um, installing it the first time. But uh, you can see the second time it installed it. Um, and there's one command you need to issue from an administrative command prompt to do this. And that's just install PowerShell protect. Um, and now that uh, PowerShell Protect is installed, it's actually watching for, for some of these known exploits. So you don't actually need to um, configure anything to uh, start, you know, having uh, this this protection uh, enabled. So uh, there are a lot of options that you can configure inside PowerShell Protect, um, which include, you know, custom rules and that kind of thing. If you want to actually audit and block scripts that may have your own custom features. But there are 10 rules that are built in by default um, into PowerShell Protect. Um, and those include things like AMSI bypass and the logging bypass and a couple other things that I'll show off um, in a second here. So let's actually try to run that AMSI by bypass. So if I were to do that, it works perfectly because I didn't restart my PowerShell prompt. So one thing is after you uh, install the new AMSI provider, um, you have to make sure that you either restart the machine or um, restart your PowerShell process. So now let's run that AMSI bypass. And now you can see PowerShell Protect has actually gone ahead and blocked that uh, execution of that bypass. And I can no longer do um, the AMSI scan buffer because it was unable to actually patch the process. Um, if we actually go up to our application log, uh, one thing you can actually look for when things like this are happening is uh, this 101 event ID from the PowerShell protect source. And it's going to give you some information about um, what tried to uh, go on here. And this was a 
violation of the AMSI bypass rule, and then there's an attempt to pretty much bypass um, AMSI. Um, so the other thing that we can try is doing the uh, logging bypass. So if we were to just try to pretty much bypass uh, module logging, you'll see that PowerShell Protect is now um, preventing that from happening as well. So we can't actually set the log pipeline execution details property to false. So you can't actually turn off um, module logging. Uh, and additionally, you cannot do a script block logging um, property either. So even though we're using reflection here to try to get that has logged value, you can see that PowerShell Protect stopped it from actually executing um, inside uh, this PowerShell pro process here. There are some additional things that um, uh, PowerShell Protect pre prevents. Um, one of those is disabling um, Defender. So in most cases, a, a typical user won't be able to disable Defender anyways because of permissions. But what's nice about this is that if someone does try to do this, it blocks it. And it also logs it. So you'll be able to see in the event log that someone attempted to disable Defender. So that could just kind of be a a canary in the coal mine kind of thing um, in terms of someone messing around in the system when they shouldn't be. Um, some other things that uh, are built in by default, uh, one is emit behavior. So emit system.reflection.emit is a namespace that's used for uh, kind of defining .NET types inside memory. Um, there's pretty much no reason that a standard PowerShell user will have to do this, and it's used frequently by uh, tools such as uh, PowerSploit to load up things like Mimikatz and stuff like that into memory by defining these um, these uh, dynamic assemblies in memory, um, and PowerShell Protect will actually check for that kind of stuff, and it won't allow those things to be kind of run inside memory. Um, Another kind of common thing that is found in PowerSploit, um, this one is for persistence, is the ability to create persistent WMI event subscribers. So an event subscriber might be listening for a process starting or a, log, a user logged in, that kind of thing. Um, it probably has legitimate uses. So um, this could potentially be something that you would want to disable in case you are using persistent WMI event subscribers. But it's very uncommon, and it's more of a common attack technique than um, a typical user scenario. So we've opted to actually block that by default. So you won't be able to um, create um, pretty much persistent WMI event subscribers with PowerShell Protect enabled. So as you can see here, PowerShell Protect, all we had to do is run a single command and it blocks against these 10 suspicious behaviors uh, along with those bypasses. Um, so it kind of gives you an extra layer of security and it also gives you a little, like I said, canary in the coal mine with the event logs so you can actually see PowerShell Protect blocking things inside your user's environment. Um, remember that PowerShell Protect, is, just like any security software, is just another layer of security and doesn't provide 100% protection from all these kinds of things. Um, but it's definitely something to work, uh, work into your kind of toolkit of tools that you can use to help harden your environment. So again, in this video, we went over some, or the logging bypass and the AMSI bypass in PowerShell, along with some suspicious behavior that you might find inside your PowerShell environment. And then we use PowerShell to protect and block and log uh, those events. You can download PowerShell Protect from the PowerShell gallery, and you can learn more about licensing for PowerShell Protect on our website.